Have you ever wanted to understand pivotal altitude without a lot of math? You can. I think visually, and I'll give you a visual explanation. I also know the math and physics, so I can assure you that this explanation is correct. In this explanation, we're going to ignore the effects of wind. An aircraft in a constant bank with coordinated rudder turns in a circle. If you visualize an airplane turning in a circle, you note that the wings map out a cone. If there is a pylon at the base of the cone, a pilot can use a feature on the wingtip to create a sight line to the pylon. As the airplane flies around the circle with the pylon at the center, the pylon will remain fixed at the end of the sight line and in the center of the circle. The gaze of the pilot will remain centered on the pylon. The plane is flying around the surface of the cone at pivotal altitude and the sight line directly to the pylon is maintained. What if the airplane is flown at a lower altitude, in other words, an altitude less than pivotal altitude? If the plane is flown too low, the tip of the cone is underground. The pilot's line of sight traces a circle around the pylon. In other words, the gaze point moves around the pylon in a circle. Since the gaze point moves with the airplane, the pylon will appear to recede. If you're below pivotal altitude, you should raise the nose for a slight climb. If the airplane is above pivotal altitude, the gaze point still traces out a circle, but the gaze point is on the other side of the pylon. The gaze point seems to recede behind the pylon, or alternatively, the pylon seems to advance. If the pylon advances, we're too high, so lower the nose. Let's talk about what happens when an airplane changes its speed in the turn. I want to be clear here that when we talk about a faster and slower airplane, we're talking about the same airplane, your airplane, simply flown at a faster or slower airspeed. If we have two identical airplanes with the same bank, but one is flying faster, the faster airplane will have a greater radius of turn. Let's look at why this is the case. If the two airplanes are in level flight and the weight is the same, the vertical component of lift must be the same for both airplanes. But wait, a faster airplane should be generating more lift. So in order to fly level, the faster airplane must use a lower angle of attack. If the lift and the bank are the same for the two airplanes, the horizontal component of lift must be the same for the two airplanes. Now, remember that the horizontal component of lift is what causes the plane to turn. We say that it has a centripetal acceleration, which means center seeking. A higher horizontal component of lift means a tighter turn, in other words, a shorter radius of turn. Owing to the inverse relationship between velocity and radius of turn, a given horizontal component of lift can either give us a short radius of turn at a low velocity or a large radius of turn at a high velocity. In other words, the lower velocity airplane with the lower radius of turn has the same centripetal acceleration as the higher velocity plane with the higher radius of turn. That is provided that the horizontal component of lift is the same for both airplanes. So in a level turn, at a constant bank, if we speed up our airplane, the radius of turn must increase. So the faster airplane flies a higher radius of turn and by simple geometry must fly at a higher altitude to be at the pivotal altitude. And that's all there is.